come back. October 2017. And uh, I had a little, take a little break. I guess I kicked off there uh, June or so. I had this show I had to do. And also I was dealing with the obvious rejection of being not getting to Texas Biennial, which I thought was I was going to be a shoe in for some reason. I thought it was well time, far time to advance uh, true Texas asshole art, but apparently. Yeah, it was, it was fail. I didn't get the, the show. And uh, the thing is, you get all built up in this act of rejection, you know, and, and get all worked up into this. It, it just, you know, you start coming up with all these concepts and ideas, and you're going to beat them by outproducing them. And reality is, is no one really gives a fuck. And so, you just get basically, you just lose your momentum. It was a no-go, even with the curator. We had a little exchange, it was nice, pleasant. Everything's pleasant, everything's nice, everything's good. I actually uploaded the work over at, uh, on my George's Up site. Kind of like, so I, basically I was, when I quit making videos, I had to go and do a show or have an exhibit in, over in Marfa. And so I have crew, I was spare parts. We get into all these old Polaroids, you know. And check this out. This blurt this is one of the blurt books. Like 30 bucks by the one of these guys. But I wanted to make a catalog of everything. This is what about a month and a half's worth of work is like. Let me show you. I ended up like sold that one. Some guy was a he was a big into antique lures. Uh, that was the easy sell, and then there's a building there. That's all that work there. Mr. Backwash. Man spreading out, you know, all this stuff. Sold these two guys. I don't think there's anything funny. Sold these two. Sold these two. Sold that one. This one, uh, uh, still in the wait. I don't know why. But, um, let's see here. Didn't sell that one. That was the, that's actually the title of the show. And, uh, sold this one. Live Crash. And this, sold that one amazingly. This is, this is a painting I tried to do a Blossom, but it just was a disaster. That was one of the first ones that sold. I can't, well, couldn't believe it. And then uh, this one here is just this is a bar called Harry's, and I put. I, I people ask me, well, what's the most scary? I, I told people the most scariest painting in the whole show is this one of a this a DPS officer in front of a Harry's, because that's when everyone is here hanging out, and you're always wondering you're gonna make it home at night. And uh, there's one over, did another ruby painting. And here's me sort of trolling uh, this one gallery over in um. Marfa called Eugene Bender Gallery, and it's supposed to be a uh, streetwalker harasses old man in a wheelchair. Uh, I even sent him the photographs of this, but I uh, didn't get any response. See, uh, you, just like me, I'm the streetwalker harassing this old gallery guy. And this got into freaking the internet, a glass tire, which is pretty good. But I could, you know, of all the ones, I don't know why, it was, I got to the point, actually, it was a painting of this lady I, I know over in his San, San Marcos. And, and uh, I was at Paul after done. I was like, "Oh my gosh, she looks like some kind of crazy chick," you know. And I was just like, eh. "And there's another bar called uh, Lost Horse, I think it's called." Yeah. And, the, and uh, Fred sold. I can't, you know, can't believe that. And there's that. And, and there's me with a, a Jeffrey Valance piece, Blinky the Hen. And uh, I thought that was a good photo, and so I put it in there. He, he ended up. I mean, we ended up trading works for this little. Just look at Blinky. It's this thing, and uh, this guy did where you buried a chicken. And uh, back in, I don't know what it was, I think it was back in the early 80s. And uh, he uh, he had like a formal funeral for a, a hen, took it out of bought it at the grocery store, did the whole nine yards to it. And uh, he's a really cool guy. I like I like Jeffrey. But the reception was pretty. I actually took footage, footage of the reception. Here's my show over here in uh, Martha. Goddamn. Fucking hail. Alright. Fucking hail is crazy. Oh. Did y'all want to introduce yourselves? Howdy, John Hancock of the Amazing Hancock Brothers. I am Mr. Carlos Fernandez, Houston, Texas. Texas. 
Here we go. See so you got little plates up there? Yeah. He's got a little dry spot there. I don't know, this one rain might not have made it too dry though. I mean, it was only like a handful of people. One of the funny parts of the thing was uh, these three drunken. I mean, you can just spot Dallas and Houston with ladies. You know, I'm like, see, I'm, I just turned uh, 48, 40, 49 a couple days ago. And now I'm getting really good. You can get real keen of seeing these ladies are like in their mid 40s. A lot of makeup on, fancy clothes. But it's still got that old party girl. In Texas, there's a lot of party girls out here. They like to dress real crazy and. A lot of a lot of bling and uh, and they're real loud and they like to get drunk and have margaritas and, they, and so Big Ben they come out here to party you know they're usually married to some kind of dude old guy someone who makes a lot of money and so they kind of have the permission to carry on like a like they're still in a sorority somewhere back in the 20s you know and so they come out here to like cut loose and so these three ladies piled into the into my uh, little show over there at the spare part trans candy and. Uh, they were, they mistaken me. They thought I was some kind of hat guy, you know, and they just started talking to me and they were trying to negotiate with me about hats. And I was like, I'm not, I'm the artist there. And they looked, they just went, what? And then they started harassing uh, some people in the thing. It was funny, you know, all the guys just stood around just got just nodding until they kind of like wound out and then left the store. It was just like, we all knew. It was like, oh, typical Dallas bitches, basically, you know, uh, typical just, you know. This is one of the things I showed this book to some people. There's two guys, uh, old James and Klepper. They have a lot of, uh, they have, they have several books under their, their belt, been published. And, uh, so I was, when I was blabbing with them, I showed them this book and they were like, man, you got, you got to pull your shit together and come up with some kind of catalog of work. And they said, they know people are going to submit it to. So I've been dealing with a rule of this. Big Ben Desert themes and shit. I was like, man, that's what I'm gonna do. So now the focus is is just basically the next four years compile themes. I think I'm gonna use YouTube also <coughs> to help keep me on track theme wise, you know. And uh, <coughs> just make it more about kind of like the stuff that I was trying to do right when I left Redford back in 2000, goddamn 10 maybe, and <coughs> not get distracted with all this gross perverted stuff if that's possible